The story is told from the perspective of a female. My name is Christina and I'm a mom of two children and a cop. The story happened when I was 18 years old. I was a pretty good girl growing up and I always listened to my parents. My mom was a nurse and my dad was a cop. I have a younger brother named Ricky. One day I was out with my best friend named Alice and my baby brother and we were at the movies watching Ghostbusters. It was also Ricky's birthday. He was turning 10 years old and he absolutely loved Ghostbusters. Anyway, after the movie was over I couldn't shake the fact that someone was watching me from the shadows. That's when I ran into my ex-boyfriend named Joshua. We used to date in college but eventually we broke up because he was very obsessed with me and he even became verbally abusive towards me. We would always fight over the smallest things and he was also very demanding. He told me what to wear, what to say, how he wanted his dinner made at a special time. It was crazy. When this happened, I became very, very afraid of him. When I decided enough was enough, I dumped him. Well, he didn't really like that, and then he vowed that I would regret it. Why hello there, beautiful. I didn't expect to see you here. He said as he tried to kiss the back of my hand. This is something he used to do when we dated. I immediately removed my hand from his grasp and then I said, Why are you here? I don't want to see you. Aw, oh, come on baby, don't be so mean. I've been changing since we broke up and I really want to show you how much I changed. He said as he prepared to put his hand on my left cheek. Not in a million years. You can fool anyone else, but I know who you are. You're a selfish and verbal abuser. I would never go out with you again. I said as I then left with my little brother Ricky who was a little shaken up from my outburst. I thought that that would be the only time I would ever see Joshua, but it wasn't. Not by a long shot. After that encounter, a bouquet of roses began to come to my house. And since my dad was a cop, he knew about my past relationship with Joshua. But soon afterwards, it then escalated to poems, pictures of me going to college, going out with Alice, and even cooking a simple lunch for me and Ricky. There is also one specific photo, which was of me and Joshua when we first started to date. I immediately threw up upon seeing it. My dad went to Joshua's place and decided to confront him about it. That's when Joshua confessed that he was still in love with me. So my dad filed a restraining order against him. It really gave me some comfort but soon one day while at Ricky's best friend's house, Ricky was playing with his two best friends Joey and Duke. They were playing Pokemon and I was in the living room listening to some music when Ricky entered the living room. He looked really worried about something as he then handed me a small letter. Where did you get this? I asked him. I'm not allowed to tell, he said as he ran away. I had cut open the letter with a letter opener and that's when I saw that it was a photo of me and my new boyfriend named Keith and written on the back of it, it said, You're mine, you slut. I immediately felt sick and started to throw up in a trash can and I decided to call my dad. Later that night, I had just drifted off to sleep when I heard what sounded like a camera going off. I instinctively grabbed a metal bat and then hit the person right in the face. He fell on the ground back first and I began to beat him mercilessly on the back and face. The person was revealed to be one of Joshua's friends named Mitch. That's when he revealed that Joshua threatened his family if he didn't get a picture of me. My dad feeling bad for Mitch only gave him one month of house arrest due to his age. I'm gonna finish this myself. I left the house with my dad's gun and I went to go see Joshua. He was just sitting on his porch with a really creepy and twisted smile. My love, I just knew you would come back to me. He said to me. I immediately kicked him in the face and he then fell on the ground face first. I could shoot you right now and watch your brains go all over the pavement, but I believe jail time would be much more appropriate for you. I said to him as the cops immediately came and then handcuffed him. My dad came as well, but in the last ditch effort, Joshua then took out a really big knife and stabbed one cop in the stomach and the other in the leg, and then he tried to charge right for me. He then started yelling, If I can't have you, nobody will. I immediately fired my gun. I shot him once in the leg and then the arm which held the knife. 
he started to thrash and yell in pain. At his trial, I had to testify against him in court. He was sentenced to 30 years in prison without the possibility of parole. It was as if the terror had finally stopped. As a precaution, we decided to move away because in that 30 years, Joshua would get out of jail and he would probably hunt down me and my family. But this time, the game will end. Winner takes all. Around nine months ago, I was in a very dark place and very much struggling to find any sort of happiness or motivation in my life. My social life was non-existent, my dad had terminal cancer, and I pretty much had nobody to help me. That is, until I met my ex, which we'll call Kay. I had met Kay online in some sort of group chat, and we instantly headed off. She was pretty fun, and we shared so many interests. I instantly became attracted to her and pretty much wanted to talk to her every single day because at the time she was pretty much all I had. And eventually, after about a month of talking, I decided to pop the question and that was by far the biggest mistake I've ever made. She seemed to be really normal and pleasant at first, but as time went on she gradually revealed things about her past that were quite dark such as the time that she told me that her ex-boyfriend had raped her and then got away with it and then she attempted suicide afterwards. Now, I've met many sexual assault victims and I must say that everything she said just didn't really add up and she would always change the story to the point that where it was like a hostage situation. But at the time, I was in such a horrible mental state that I just pushed it under the rug and went along with it. She quickly started to show her true colors turning into the complete opposite of the girl I first met with her going on about how she absolutely hates every single race other than white people and how she thinks that rapists are just the most attractive people. This really put me off and totally shocked me, as expected. Literally every single day she would be revealing things that were just so disgusting and wrong. It was around December where I broke the news that my dad was dying and he only had about a week left. Well, she totally jumped on the opportunity and told me that her grandpa had cancer and that the best thing to do was to leave them alone because they're already stressed out enough. You're all going to call me a complete idiot because I actually believed her and thought that she actually wanted to help me, but how wrong I was. My father passed away three days later and I was devastated. The funeral came around and I was there for around six hours or so meeting up with relatives and friends and going through the process. And while I was gone, she actually went out and cheated on me with her ex-boyfriend, who I later found out is a convicted sex offender and like 23 years old or something. We were 15 at the time. But I didn't actually find this out until many months later, and you're not going to believe it, but she actually pretended to be the perfect girl for Endeavor, as well as manipulating me and trying to ruin me. About two months after the funeral, I caught her cheating red-handed and I was absolutely livid. She told me that it wasn't her sending nudes, but her friends took her phone and they were the ones sending the guy nudes. At first, I didn't really believe her at all, and she decided to pull the suicide card and made me believe that she had actually overdosed. And I pretty much immediately tried to contact her family, and someone picked up Kay's phone and texted me that 911 was called and that she'll be alright. I was extremely gullible at the time, I know. And as you could have guessed, she was full of shit and all of it was a lie. But as of many things, I didn't really know this until months later. After the apparent suicide attempt, we decided to have a fresh start and start over. But things remained the same and then I learned more about what she truly was. One night she had got really drunk and then called me and was rambling on about random stuff like fetishes. And she told me that she thinks that it would be really hot if I had intercourse with a dead body. And upon hearing that, you can imagine how I responded. I hung up immediately and hardly talked to her for about two days. That is, until she told me that she was just drunk and she always says odd things like that. And of course, me being totally naive, I gave her another chance, and this last chance is where shit hit the fan. I can't for the life of me remember the order of things or when they happened, so I'll just have to list what she did. She got into a fight and she had bruises all over her body. And when she went to school, she broke down crying, telling everybody that I was physically abusing her, despite the fact that we lived about an hour and a half away from each other and only met once in person well over a month ago. While in the middle of my algebra class, my phone was absolutely blowing up and my teacher let me answer it to see what was going on. 
Random people were calling me, then accusing me of all kinds of crazy things, saying that I sexually abused her and beat the hell out of her. I totally lost my shit. I was yelling at these people while in class and received so many death threats. So many people were calling me, telling me they were going to find me. I was trying so desperately to clear my name. Miraculously, I was able to convince people that there was no possible way that I could have done those things. Because, I mean, I live over an hour away and had overwhelming proof that I didn't do it. And when Kay found out, she went full on ape shit on me for over an hour. She called me and texted me saying terrible things such as I failed my father and that I was such a low life because my best friend is black. And then she actually admitted all of the bad things she did to me behind my back. Such as cheating on me with her 23 year old rapist ex and flirting with random old men online and sending them nudes. I finally reached my breaking point and I've cut off all contact with her. I've never felt such a relief in my life. I'll be honest. I cried. Just knowing that I was tricked by this terrible evil person into letting my father die alone and putting up with her twisted fantasies of necrophilia and murder, I just can't believe I put up with it. I know that I was extremely stupid throughout the whole ordeal, but you have to remember that I wasn't in the right state of mind and I was so dependent on her for any type of happiness or what I thought was happiness. Here I am almost a year later with horrible trust issues and I absolutely refuse to even hug people. I don't see myself having another relationship with anyone for a very, very long time. But on a brighter note, I'm doing much better now. I've come to terms with my father's passing and I have many friends that are here for me. But to top it all off, Kay's now pregnant and she was actually institutionalized for telling the school counselor about all of her messed up fantasies and urges. And she's effectively ruined her chances at any kind of normal life. So I guess everything is okay in the end, and this ends with a happy ending. At least for me. If there's any sort of advice that I can tell you, is that you please make sure you get to know someone before you ever have any sort of relationship with them. It might just run your life. This all started when my mom met her new boyfriend who I'll call Ray. This happened when I was 14. The first time that he met me and my siblings, he looked at my mother and then said, Oh wow, I didn't know you had a gang. So, great first impression, right? He seemed like a pretty normal guy at first though, but after he moved in, we soon realized that he was a total hothead. He would always yell a lot and throw these crazy tantrums like a child, but he would always sweet talk his way around my mom to make everything seem okay again, and I guess that's probably why she didn't dump him sooner. My mom has always been a bit immature, but I think it made it easier for him. But Ray found it really difficult to get along with me and my siblings. He would always complain about every little thing that we did wrong, and he started to accuse us of trying to ruin their relationship because of this. I have three sisters, and me and my younger sisters were apparently the wild ones of the family, and we were the ones he had a problem with. He would soon stop us from seeing friends that he didn't like, and would be more strict with us than my other sisters. I realized he was crazy when he picked me up from school one day and while driving home, he accused me and my sister of talking about him behind his back. I said, what? I didn't do that. And then he started going on about me not bothering to deny it because he's got proof of it. When we got home, he had showed us a recorder and then played it back to us and it was about me and my sister complaining about him in our bedroom. And I knew that it was in our bedroom. What the hell? That's when I immediately asked him. Why are you recording us in our bedroom? What the hell's wrong with you? We had a really big argument about it and I immediately rang my mom and told her. But I think she didn't want to get on his bad side because she didn't even say anything about it to him. Which still really annoys me to this day. I made him remove all of the recorders from mine and my sister's room. When I was 16 years old I had got a job at a chicken place and he had a really big problem with that as well. The apparent reason for this was because my boyfriend at the time also worked there, and he thought that I was just going there to mess around. So I guess his way of making sure that I didn't was to come and record me, and he literally did this for an entire month. I was pretty much done at this point, and I had decided to move in with my dad who had just moved back from New Zealand. My dad was totally pissed when I told him all this, and he wanted to call the police on him. But of course, my mom begged him not to. My mom and her boyfriend eventually broke up though soon afterwards over something unrelated. So yeah, 
I never did see him again, and hopefully it stays that way.